My name is Andrew and this is Rogue Wrenching. Today we are working on the RX-8 project car, which is a super fun, super exciting project. If you were with us last week, you saw we pulled a spark plug out and looked inside the engine with a inspection camera to try to see why we had a misfire on the front rotor. And there wasn't a whole lot of information that we were able to prove or really find out through that process. So we are back today for a compression test. A compression test is the only way to know really for sure whether or not the base engine is in good working condition or not. I suspect that it's not. However, before we spend the money to take the engine apart or put a new engine in, it's always good to verify the diagnosis, which in this case means we're going to need to do a compression test. Because this engine is a rotary engine, so that means it's got spinning triangles instead of pistons, that means that a traditional compression test tool does not work to compression test this because you want to be able to compression test each face of the rotor as it turns within the housing. In order to compression test a rotary engine, you need a rotary compression tester. This is the kit that we're using today. This is from rotarycompressiontester.com. This is a fabulous tool, or so I'm told, but we are going to find out today how well this thing actually works. These run about $340, $350, depending on if you find them on sale or not. And what I was able to do is I found a gentleman in a group of RX-8 owners that had one and he loaned it to me. So huge shout out to Sean, the guy that loaned this to me. I super appreciate it. This video would not have been possible without your help. Before any compression test, you need to disable the start. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out this relay right here, which is the fuel pump relay and just set it aside. That way there is no chance this thing tries to start while we're testing compression. Once the fuel pump relay is disconnected so the car will not even attempt to start, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn the steering wheel to the right so we can go in behind the front tire here and we're gonna go straight in with a long extension. I'm using a swivel here on the end. You don't necessarily need that, it just makes it just a little bit easier, but it's long extension and go right in through the wheel well here and you can get those spark plugs right out. So we're gonna pull out a spark plug on the front rotor and then one on the back rotor so we don't have any kind of a RPM deviation because it's coming up on compression on the other rotor. So we're gonna pull two spark plugs out so there's no compression in the engine at all and then we're gonna put the pressure transducer into the front rotor housing. We're gonna test the front rotor. We're probably gonna run the test twice just so we can get an average and get a more conclusive test result and then we'll test the back rotor so we just have a complete picture of what's going on with this motor. Okay, so we got both spark plugs out and something I noticed about this one is the first, the front spark plug has anti-seize on it and it looks like it's brand new, whereas the back spark plug does not have anti-seize on it. It doesn't look like they changed that. And then this top of the spark plug is wet, like it's not burning fuel. And this one is dry, like it is burning fuel. So again, we know our problem is in the front rotor and we're gonna do a compression test here and see exactly what that problem is. One more thing I did wanna point out is that according to the instructions here, which again, I've never used one of these, so I'm just going off the instructions, is it's important to remove the trailing spark plug, which is the upper spark plug in the rotor housing. So pull out the top two spark plugs and then we're gonna put in our pressure transducer. You can't pull both spark plugs on the same rotor, otherwise there would be no compression at all because it would all about the other spark plug hole. So pull the trailing spark plug, that is the top spark plug in the rotor, and that's where you install the pressure transducer for the rotary compression tester. So here's that pressure transducer. It just threads right into the spark plug hole. It's just a simple finger grip to twist it and just be really careful with it because this is one of the more expensive pieces of this kit. So take good care of it, especially if you're renting or borrowing it. Okay, once the pressure transducer is installed, and remember because it uses an O-ring to seal against the rotor housing, it doesn't need to be very tight at all. We're gonna install this extension piece to get our pigtail farther out, and then we're gonna plug in the compression tester. So this tool is pretty straightforward to use, and it comes with a long enough extension cord that you can actually get all the way up into the driver's seat so that you can reach both the throttle and the key. So to test this, what we're gonna do is we're going to power the unit on. We're gonna follow the on-screen instructions. One of the key things is to hold the thro throttle wide open while we're testing so we get an unrestricted flow of air coming in to measure compression. Power switch on the side, a red button right there. We're gonna power it on. It's gonna boot up, made in the USA. So we're going to, it says begin cranking. We're going to clutch in gas all the way to the floor and just go straight to cranking. Except the battery is apparently 100% flat dead. Well, the key is completely dead, which means this thing not only has an engine problem, but it has a parasitic draw. So the battery is being drained over time with the battery connected. So that's super fun and it's gonna be a great chase, but it's gonna be good because the reality is it makes for really interesting content because it's really helpful for being able to help you guys figure out how to chase these problems in your own car. So not the end of the world, but that doesn't mean we're gonna have to get a, another vehicle in here to try to jumpstart this thing. Got the Explorer. Yeah, oops. So now we've got the Explorer 
nosed in to the backyard so that we can hook this thing up and jump this car. So let's go ahead and proceed with the compression test as originally planned. Okay, so we're gonna go wide open throttle, and when it says begin cranking, we'll start cranking. Begin cranking, here we go. So it gives us the actual numbers, 55, and then adjust to altitude and RPM. So it'll correct them to what the standard is. So we've got 55, 63, 55. So the back rotor is worn out well below the minimum numbers for this engine. However, it's even, it's consistent all the way around, which means there's likely not a catastrophic failure in the rear rotor. So let's go ahead, let's move the pressure transducer to the front rotor and test the rotor that we know is having issues. All right, so now we're back here for the front rotor, which is our problem rotor. Here we go. See, and it's not even registering that it's cranking. Okay, so I've been fighting with this thing for a while now. You can see the sun is going down behind me and it still shows begin cranking. So our compression is so low on the front rotor that the tester doesn't even think the engine is turning. So we can anticipate that there has been some kind of catastrophic failure in the front rotor housing, which means likely this engine is complete toast, which means that we're probably not going to be rebuilding this engine. We're probably just going to be replacing this engine. So that's not exactly the news that I was hoping to find. I was hoping to find that this thing was in rebuildable condition. However, it looks like that is definitely not the case because we are showing zero compression on the front rotor and like zero, 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 absolutely nothing. The tester won't even read it because it's so low. So I'm not sure I've done something wrong. If you guys know something about this that I don't, definitely leave a comment, let me know. So that's the compression test, I guess, video, really. There's not a whole lot more that I have to add other than our front rotor is absolutely junk. I would assume the housing is junk because the compression is so low. So I think something probably came apart and failed in there and played ping pong all in that housing. So front rotor housing is garbage. The irons might be junk. I'm not really sure until we take it apart. I'm not sure if we're going to take it apart at this stage. I might just put in a JDM used engine into it. So what I'm gonna do at this point is we're gonna call it a night. I'm gonna go ahead and send this compression tester back to the guy that loaned it to me. And we're going to pursue the avenue of looking for a JDM used engine for this car, which we may end up rebuilding before we put it in. We might just drop it in and run it. I'm not exactly sure what the direction this car is going at this point. If you guys like this video and like this kind of content, definitely subscribe. I'm doing a new video on the RX-8 every week. We're shooting for like Wednesday evening uploads. We'll see if that actually happens, but new videos weekly on the RX-8. And we also do a bunch of other cool stuff on this channel. If you are new here and you're not sure what the story is behind this and you're interested in this project, I will leave a link to the video that started it all right up there. And it's just a really interesting and exciting project. It's new to me because I'm new to rotaries, but I'm super excited to get to share this with all of you guys. So definitely subscribe if you guys are interested in this sort of a project or stuff like this. So that's kind of where we're at with that. If you want to see the initial kind of walk around, check out of the car, I will put that video right here. You should definitely watch that one next. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.